Hello and welcome to Me, The Wife and Wrexham AFC, a weekly podcast and YouTube channel discussing everything Wrexham from the point of view of long-term fans and brand new fans like my wife. So sit back, put your feet up, relax and let's get stuck in. So here we are, episode one. Um, So who the bloody hell are we, I suppose? So I'm Ryan. Uh, this is my wife, Sean. So a little bit about me. I went to my first game in the late 80s. Um, sacrilege, I don't actually remember who the first game was, to be perfectly honest. But I had, a chat. I, know, <laughs> I had a chat with my dad last night. He can't quite remember which game it was, but we know it was in the late 80s. Um, I was at the Arsenal game. Um, I remember West Ham in the snow. I remember standing on the cot with my dad in the 90s with a sea of Gary Bennett masks uh, in front of me. Um, I, we went to Stoke away. Um, I remember beating Salford 5-1 on Boxing Day a few years ago. Um, and a few trips to Wembley as well. The one that sticks out in my mind is North Ferriby for all the wrong reasons. But that's the one that sort of sticks in my mind. Um, my wife, on the other hand, is brand new. Proper brand new aren't you? So, when was your first game? When did you when did you start coming? September last year. Yes. Um, my first game was the um, game against Dagenham and Redbridge. Yeah. Mullen won. Yep, one nil. Mullen scored the winning goal, and it was an experience. I have to say. Yeah. And that's I think that's the day that um, yeah I fell in love with it. See, I'm going to throw a quote at you now. Now, you always used to say to me, football is just a game. It really isn't just a game. It's not just a game. See? Yes. See? It's not just the game. And that you're really into it now. I love it. Yeah. But I don't mind. You you won't mind me saying, but you're you're 40. Yeah? 40. yeah. You're 40. Thanks for that. Why now? Uh... The club is just down the road. They've been playing for years. Why now? Well, for a start, I've never been interested in football. No, I've that's always been true. a girly girl where football was for boys. Yeah. Um, but I went to my first game by accident last year. Yeah. When I um, used my brother's season ticket because he <laughs> couldn't go. Don't you got a ticket? We'll just edit that bit out. Um, and I, yeah, I went to my first game uh, by accident, and yeah, I, it was my first game of many, and I. I'm, I loved it. I don't know what I loved about it, but I loved it. Would it be fair to say, though, just to rewind it a little bit, would you say, would you definitely have gone if there wasn't the whole sort of Rob and Ryan circus? Do you think you would have still ended up coming if there wasn't that whole Rob and Ryan thing swirling around? Probably, if I'm honest, probably not. No. Because I, you know, I'm a massive Ryan Reynolds fan anyway. Yeah. And I thought, do you know what? If I can get a glimpse of him, then amazing. Um, but yeah, so it, I, yeah, I, I doubt it. No. I can never say never, but I, I doubt it. Because obviously, we had we had a few years ago. Um, I remember sitting in the Mold Road where there was like three thousand people there, and now there's you know there's like ten thousand people there. So you know there's there's a big difference, and I think there's a, there's a huge difference in the atmosphere that's created by ten thousand people as opposed to uh, maybe three thousand annoyed fans because things aren't quite going going their way. And I, yeah, I agree. I'm not sure that train would have got. Away I from don't the think station for a lot of people. For, for a lot of people, I don't think it would have either. To be honest, yes, I, I think one key point is now I'm I'm part of quite a few groups on on Facebook, um, uh, sort of Wrexham AFC groups. Um, the feeling is now I love new fans. Obviously, one's my wife, so I've got to say <laughs> that. But I I love new fans. We're building a new stand. You know, you've got to fill that that stand with somebody. You can't just move everybody from the tech end over to the new cop. You know, it, it doesn't work like that. You need new fans and you need to push the club forward. There are fans out there, old-time fans, who've been fans of the club for years and years and years, who are a little bit sceptical about new fans coming in. They don't really like the change too much. Um have you felt that at all 
from anyone at the club or anything like that at all? No. I think no. everyone, yeah, I think everyone kind of wants the same thing. We're all kind of on the same page. Now, like you said, there are a few people, but I think you're going to get people like that who don't like change. But... I, I, what I sort of find is there's quite a few sort of keyboard warriors online. Oh, they're, 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 they're more than happy to voice their, their opinions in one way or another. But I think the vote of originally when Ryan and Rob were, were originally going to take over the club, I think the vote... The, the, the sort of level of how many people wanted it and how many pe yeah. people didn't from the Rexham Supporter Trust shows that it's quite a small minority. Um, moving on to football itself, what what is it that you still don't quite understand? Um... I, that's not me being patronising. <laughs> it's just there's sometimes when you lean over to me and you go, oh, offside? And I go, yeah. Offside. That, that is probably what, you know, that's probably one thing that I will never, ever understand. I kind of do understand it. You will understand it. But when... Because I'll meet you. Yeah. <laughs> but when I'm actually... when so Like, you can tell me how, what, you know, what the offside rule is and it'll kind of sink in and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But when um, I'm actually watching a game... Yeah. I find it difficult to say, well, how can you tell that that's offside? Because you're sitting here and yeah. they're over there and I just get... Yeah. So that's, I think, offside you know, rule is... Do you know the big key of, of knowing when it's offside? The flag. Just the flag. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I mean, I'm not in line. I can't... You get. You do judge. You know, I played football from, like, the age of nine, and I've watched football from about the same age, and I'm 40 as well. You just sort of... You can sort of judge. When the ball comes over, my initial reaction is look. And then you can sort of tell, all right, I haven't got an imaginary line like they do on, you know, Match of the Day or Sky Sports, but you can yeah. you can sort of judge that. What about, like, tactics and things like that and positioning of players and are you picking that up or are you still a little bit, is it is it quite black and white in the sense of defender plays in the middle, so midfielder, and then scores the goals, so striker? Um... I'm I'm still kind of coming to grips with the yeah. positions and stuff. I obviously know that. Actually, no, I don't. I'm saying... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I was just going to say I know like the positions and stuff. But I I know what the positions are. Yeah. But um, I w I kind of don't know on a pitch where those yeah, yeah, people yeah. should be, where they're allowed to go, and I'm, all that kind of stuff. I'm glad you're honest because I what the last game that we went to, I said. Ooh, They've changed the shape in the midfield, and you went, yeah, yeah, like that. And I was like, yeah, you don't, you don't know what I'm talking about. Like I know about. people talk about, um, like a four-two-two two transfer. Four-two-two. Four, two. You're missing two players there. It's four-four-two. Four-four-two transfer. Yeah. Tra not transformation. Formation. Yeah. And all that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm not. You're struggling exactly, with that. Yeah. We we'll do yeah. some work on that. Yeah. That's fine. So uh, thinking back to last season, what was your what what game sticks in your mind? Right for for good reasons, bad reasons, whatever. What's the what what was your favourite game? Um, I think probably the Dover game. I think it'd be you'd be hard pushed to find someone who didn't say that it game. It was to be absolutely mental. It was bonkers, wasn't it? It was just completely just I remember when that sixth goal went in. I remember you were sitting that side of me, and I remember it going in, and I thought as it went in, I had all these emotions of, I'm going to cry. And then I thought, you'd think I'd turn and hug you. But there was a guy <laughs> over on the left. I just, I was hugging him and jumping up and down. Don't know who he is. He, was, no, he wasn't even the left TV, he was in front of me. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd transcended Rose to hug a stranger. It, we just, our eyes met. So as as the goal went in, our eyes met, and it was just like, yeah, it was so romantic. It was, yeah, and I, I've never seen him since. So he hasn't called or anything. So, um, but I think if you're you... watching this, <laughs> and you remember. I think you'd be hard pushed to find someone. I think that that Dover game for me. I think I said to you at the time, I I don't think I've been been actually been sat at a game like that before. Ever, yeah, yeah. ever in like thirty years of going to games, or what? I, I, I've just never experienced something quite like that yeah. before, and it, it was it was amazing. I think to watch. So, extra step on from that. Have you got a favourite player? 
Um, I quite, oh, I don't know really. I like Tozer. Yeah. For reason? He's just a good thrower. I just think he's a good player. <laughs> he's a good thrower. Ooh, he's a good thrower. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't know. I, I kind of like them all. Yeah. Um, well, we met Ben Tozer though, didn't we? Briefly outside, the, outside, and then ever since then, it's sort of been like, oh, it's Ben Tozer. It's friends. It's friends. Yeah, I did do that little thing where he was coming, and I was like, I was like, hi Ben, like that, and it was like, and we got in the car, and it was just like, I don't say that. But yeah, no, he's yeah, I agree. He he, he is very much the um the the sort of set piece cheat code, really. I mean. Whenever, whenever he's got a, a, a throw in on the on the side, it's as good as a corner, isn't it? Really. Mm. Now, what about sort of strikers, Ollie? You know, Paul. Are they? Um. Yeah, I like I like Ollie and I, I like both of them to be honest. Yeah. Because I think them two together, I like you know a force to be reckoned with. I think them them two work really well together. Whether they were friends beforehand and they've kind of got this, um, what's the word? connection yeah um you know but they're so good together on the pitch yeah definitely i think see it's a bit weird for me because when i when i used to play football um i was a, i was a defender central defender um so i i don't I need to try and find the right words but i i can't they, strikers don't bore me but they, it's not that it's they're there to do a job they, they you know they they score goals and it's great, and I love Paul Mullin, and I love Ollie Palmer, and that's brilliant. But I'm me personally, I focus more on the defensive side of the game because I think a lot of the time, I think people get overlooked a little bit. Um, Luke and, Young's one for me. Yeah, but he's a midfielder. I know, but I think he gets overlooked. He, he does get overlooked, definitely. I mean, Aaron Hayden, I think, is immense. One of my favourite players. I think he's a great player. Do like Ben Tozer. I like him sitting there in the way that he plays. Um, so I do tend to veer towards the, the more defensive mm. players. Um, the, the, the strikers do their thing, but as a defender, the strikers was your enemy, weren't they? You know, when I was playing, so it was like you know, it's the it's the defenders' club, isn't it? Do you know yeah. what I mean? So I don't um, know what you mean, though. No, <laughs> I've never played a game of football you in my don't life. Don't know what I mean. If you, yeah, let's throw this out at you. We've obviously. <laughs> So we're filming this today, which is Sunday. So it's the day after the Macclesfield game, and it will go out on Monday. So today um, is the women's Euro yep. final. So yep. it's England versus um, Germany. versus Germany. Yep. If we, you're forty. If you were twenty, mm -hmm. do you think your now found love of football and obviously the you you see a lot more women's football on TV. Do you think that would make you want to go out and play, or do, are you are you very much a spectator? I know my abilities. Yeah. So I know. So it's not something you'd want to give a go. No, no. I I'd, I'd be. I think I would be rubbish at it. To be honest, I so. can see how it's inspiring for a lot of people. We're Welsh. England being in the final in Euros, I couldn't really care less. But I can see how it could be inspiring for people to go out and go, actually, I could do that. Yeah. And go out and do that. So, um, so yeah, it props to you, I suppose. I, I think know. it's, I think in regards to the England women's team, I think they are um, kind of a good thing for young girls who think that football is, you know, me growing up, football was literally just a boys well, game. Well, you've even said it here today. You've said, you know, football's for boys. It was, it was. Girls is, I don't know, shopping? I don't know. You like that as well, don't you? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think I think them getting into the, even getting into like the quarterfinals, semifinals, whatever, I think that is kind of giving girls, young girls, that kind of confidence to say, you know Definitely. what? Definitely. I, I agree that. with that. Yeah. So obviously with this being a brand new podcast slash YouTube channel, um, we're going to try and catch up with as much news um, from the last few weeks to try and bring us right up to date, ready for episode two, which will be next week. Um, just one important thing I think we need to touch on is I keep saying it's a podcast slash YouTube channel. It is exactly that. Um, so 
wherever you are seeing or hearing this now, yes. So there is the alternative of, uh, available as well. So it's a podcast. It's available wherever you get your podcast. So from Apple Music or from uh, uh, from Spotify or from Google Play, wherever it is you get your podcast, this is available. Um, that's if you don't want to look at our faces on a weekly basis. Alternatively, we have a YouTube channel and this video will be on YouTube as well. It just depends which one you prefer. Um, we'd love you, even if you listen to the podcast, just to subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Leave us a like as well. That would help us out massively and that would be great. But, you know, you choose which one you want to you wanna sort of tune into on a weekly basis, basically. Um, so to try and bring the news as up to date as we can, I think new signings is a good one to start with. Um, so we'll try and do these in order as they came in. So yep. Jordan Sunnicliffe yep. first. So he came from Crawley, um, 28, two-year deal. Um, can I be completely honest? Mm. Obviously, the Maxfield game was yesterday. Up yep. until yesterday, didn't know what he looked like. I, 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 I knew what he looked like because I'd seen the picture. I just didn't think he existed. I thought he turned up on day one. He didn't play in Spain he, he, uh, at all. He didn't play at Nantwich. I just thought, I, I was a little bit worried he was another Brisley, to be honest, where he'd just turn up, he might play once and then never again. As it turns out, I think he had a little bit of a niggle and he's, they've sort of rested him a little bit. Yeah. So, I, you know, I think he's good to go and I think he'll be a great player um, for us moving forward. Uh, Mark Howard, new goalkeeper. Yep. Saw him yesterday. What did you make of him? Good. Good? Yep. He seemed to know what he was doing. He was, yeah, he was kind of... Well, you'd hope he'd know when he's 35. <laughs> yeah. If he doesn't know what he's doing by now, there's a problem. No, no, I liked Yeah, I liked him. He looked assured. He came for a... I think... I only remember him having one corner. So I, yeah. he came for it and he commanded the box well. He looks good. Um, I think you were a bit worried about his age at first, weren't you, when we signed him? Yeah, because because you always think that footballers kind of have like a, a retirement age, don't they? They're yeah. kind of like a sell, not a sell by date, but a use by date sort of thing. Yeah, it, I think I like I explained to you, goalkeepers a little bit different. They they can they don't do any running. All they do is jump about a little bit, so they they do last longer. Yeah. Goalkeepers, you can easily have a goalkeeper playing till he's forty. Mm -hmm. So no no big deals. He won a couple of um, player of the season awards last year. Yeah, he did players player. Club play. I think he won about three or four play, uh, player of the seasons last season. He looks good. Time will tell. Yeah, I don't think he's massively been tested at the moment, has he? So, no, I no. think Saturday will be the, uh, the big test. Yes, game of the season. it will. Um, then we've got Elliot Lee came in next. Um, he didn't play yesterday, did he? He didn't play yesterday. No. I think his fitness is a little bit behind on the others. I think the same for, for Jordan Tunnicliffe as well. Uh, Tony Clough, Tony Clough. I think is I think their fitness is a little bit behind everybody else's. Um, but I, I think fingers crossed. Obviously, we've got Carnarvon Town on Tuesday. Um, from what Phil Parkinson said this week, Elliot Lee will feature in that game. So fingers crossed. Let's see. Let's see how that works. Um, good sign in. I remember his dad. Um, that's how old I am. Um, like Elliot Lee's 27 mm -hmm. and I remember his dad being 27 and being a pretty decent player playing for Newcastle to be honest so um, yeah wait and see we'll wait and see how that works out and the last one through the, the through the door is Anthony Ford we'll talk a little bit more about him in a bit when we discuss the game yesterday yeah but as a one-liner looks a top player i think mm -hmm. he look, he looks really good i'll be completely honest i hadn't heard of him i hadn't heard of him at all until until we signed him it's not someone that was really on my radar of 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 potential signings um but he looks yeah he looks decent yeah actually somebody on one of the facebook gr uh, groups said uh, my prediction is he'll be our player of the year a little bit early as we haven't even played a single game of the season <laughs> but well he looks a decent player i think to he be does. fair um I think one thing worth mentioning, um, somebody took a little sneaky picture yesterday, didn't they? Um, they put it on one of the groups. Um, it was a picture over his shoulder 
I think he was in the 1864 like suite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it very much looked like Sam Dalby was sitting at one of the tables. Um, Googled a picture of him, zoomed in on this picture. It very much looks like him. If it's not him, it's his twin. Um, for me, it's a little bit of a strange signing. I don't think he's a young lad. Isn't he 22, is he? 22. Yeah. And... Um, and I think, but the rumour is that Jake Hyde's going the other way. Uh, Jake Hyde obviously lost his number nine to Ollie. Um, so we'll wait and see what happens with that. Nothing confirmed as yet. Although by the time this goes out, it may well have been. A um, few new contracts as well. Um, so first one is Luke Young, which is a two-year deal. Yep. Thoughts? I love him. I think he's brilliant. And I, like I said before, I do think he is overlooked a lot of the time. Glad he got player of the, um, oh, I'm sorry, man of the match yesterday. Yeah, he did. Um, I, I do think that he deserved it. He's, he kind of, because he's so, I think he's. He does of, the dirty work. Yeah. That's what it is. And I think yeah. that's what gets overlooked a lot of the yeah. time. That's why I think, I think James Jones as well gets overlooked a lot because the engine that he has is unbelievable. I mean, he could he runs all day. But Luke Young as well, I think it's the same thing. He just runs and runs and runs. But it's not just a case of a headless chicken sort of job. He, 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 there is actually some purpose to it. Yeah. I feared a little bit for Luke Young. Um, when they brought Tom O'Connor in, I felt they were very similar. And I didn't really see how they were going to fit in the same team together. But we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, Harry Len. If I'm honest, heard the name, can't remember him playing. To be no, honest. you can't because he didn't play that. He, he played a decent amount of games, but he didn't play. I think it, by Christmas he was he was pretty much gone, mm. and you went week in week out where you by christmas no. you went to your first game in september a couple of other games and it was in the new year that you sort of yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much started yeah great player harry lennon he's only got he's had his injury worries throughout his career and it was a little bit of a risk signing him in the first place he was great to be honest and i, I like the competitiveness we've got in that area now mm -hmm. we've got max we've got ben we've got hayden um we've got Jordan Tunnicliffe that's come in. We've got Harry Lent. we got nice competition there. Yeah. And it's not just there as well. It's, you know, it's all over the pitch. I'm really happy for him. So it's a, it's a one-year deal, that one. Obvious reasons, you know, a little bit case. injury prone. Let's yeah, see yeah. how he gets on. But he's obviously proved his fitness and it was great to see him on the bench yesterday. So um, the last one is Bryce Susanna. Love that name. Look, yeah. <laughs> Love it. It is. Yeah. <laughs> It is a great name. I, I like him. He's a young lad. I think he's got a lot of potential. I just think it's going to take a little bit of time for him to recognise that potential. He I think he could beat players. You know, he plays wide on the right or the left or whatever. I think he could beat most players in this league for fun. I think he could. he could. He just seems to be holding back a little bit like he doesn't completely believe in his own ability i yeah. think you know we we're in our stand we hear it constantly run at him run at him and he and when he does he tends to beat them mm -hmm. he just seems a little bit sort of like go on just go just yeah. go and i think that'll come with time i think it's well worth keeping hold of him um you know and you know bringing him on i think he's he's a quick lad and i think it's well worthwhile having yeah. him there so i'm really happy with them and he's got uh, a great name as well so. and he's got a great name yeah <laughs> so departures don't want to dwell too much on these i think most of us know who's gone um uh, bristley i think he's dropped down now to buxton um so he's sort of tumbling down the leagues as, as he gets a bit older i think he's only about 32 uh but he's gone there uh the, <sighs> We've obviously lost, we released quite a few players who, who haven't currently got a club. I think we'll talk about the ones who've gone somewhere. So Kwame Thomas did a great job for us a couple of seasons ago. I think he's, I felt he was out of his depth a little bit with all the new players that we brought in. Mm -hmm. And then he goes up a league to Sutton. So it just goes to show what I know. Um, then you've got Dan Jarvis has gone to Gateshead. Yep. Jordan Ponticelli has gone to Kings Lynn. And Tyler French has gone up to Dundee. I've, I've seen a few 
Uh, Didn't he score, Tyler he French? He has scored, yeah. Um, and I think he'll do quite well up there in, in Scotty Land. Um, I think I think he'll do well. He was never really going to get a chance, I don't think, in our team. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if anyone thinks any different, but I don't think Big Phil really fancied him very much. Um, I've heard that quite a few times. Yeah. But I think the only ones we're going to really notice are, are Dan Jarvis and, and Ponticelli. They're going to play against us. No, Dan Jarvis is the only one who's going to play against us this season. Um, everyone who's gone, um, I'm not really that bothered. I, I don't want to go as far as to say that it was that we were cutting dead wood. I wouldn't, you know, I think it's a bit horrible to say dead wood, but it was players that were never really going to have an impact on the game. You know, the amount of times that we needed someone to come on and make an impact on the game. Phil stood there on the touchline. He's looked back at the bench and gone, nah. Because he didn't feel like they were ever going to yeah, make yeah. an impact on the game. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of them. I think everyone who left, I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't too bothered by, you know, I wasn't like, oh, gutted, he's gone or anything like that. Um, I think it was all the right decisions. Perhaps we haven't brought in enough to replace everything that's gone, but I still think we've got a, a, I was going to say, strong, I think we've got a strong team. I we think. have, we definitely, I think we've got some strength in depth there as well. Um, I think one thing worth mentioning while we're on this subject is Jordan Davis. Now, he didn't play in Spain. Um, he didn't play yesterday, did he, against Macclesfield? He was on the bench, yeah. but he didn't play. Um, he, I heard a little interview where he said he had a small knock uh, in Spain and it kept him out of the games. Phil Parkinson said he didn't want to risk him against Macclesfield yesterday, which is fine. Although there has been quite a bit of interest that I've heard from a unknown championship club and a couple of League One clubs as well. Um, now, in the Daily Post, he did an interview just saying, yeah, I had a little bit of a knock. and it, His actual quote was, until a bid comes in, I'm focused on my job here. And I'm looking forward to the season. Now, the only thing, and I'm not being doom and gloom. Do not get me wrong. I am not. The thing that concerned me was that he said, until a bid comes in. Now, does, so he's focused at the moment at what he's been paid to do and play for Wrexham. But is he only focused until a bid comes in? So is he already looking at what is potentially there? I may be, I, I hope I'm wrong. Um, and I hope, you know, nothing happens mm -hmm. and he's with us for the rest of the season. But the window is open and there is quite a bit of, uh, there's quite a little bit circling uh, around about him. What, how, would you, how would you feel if you went? Um, I think he's quite a good player. I think yeah. he's... Um, I wouldn't say he's an integral to the team because obviously yesterday they played and he didn't play and they, I think they did really well yesterday. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think because he's, uh, what is it? He's one of our own. He is one of, one our, of our own. One of our own. He, he is. So um, we, we got rid of him to Brighton. Not got rid of him, but Brighton came in. Mm -hmm. Obviously Premier League team, he went up to Brighton. He never played in for a, a first team game and then we got him back. Yeah. So he had a bit of experience around the Premier League. Brilliant player. He is a brilliant player. Um, again, I'm not being doom and gloom, but I think maybe what he does without the ball is sometimes the downfall. On the ball, I can't fault him yeah. at all. He is, he's amazing. Um, without the ball, I think he's still young, but I think without the ball, it maybe needs a little bit more work. And a little bit. I think you've got James Jones in there. You've got Luke Young who run around and really put in the miles. And I think that takes a little bit of the pressure off Jordan. Yeah. In the sense of he can sit back a little bit and he can he can sort of assess the game as it's going on. The problem with that is there's going to be times and there's going to be games when we need everyone to get stuck in. And perhaps that just needs a little bit of improvement yeah. in this game. That may be. Mm -hmm. So, old kit. Old kit. So, we've ordered the new kit. Yep. We work full time, so we weren't able to queue up and wait for it to come out. We've ordered it. We ordered it when it came out. Um, 
not arrived yet, obviously. Um, what do you think of it? Let's go with the red one. The red, literally the red, the red one. one. What do you think? I actually prefer it. Yeah. Um, not a massive fan of the white because I think I just, you know, I just like a block colour. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, I really like it. I like the um, the dragon. I don't know what you call them. Embellishment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The dragons on the arm. Yeah. And I also like the um, at the back at the yeah. bottom. I think I quite, you know, I quite like the dragon at the bottom as well. I think a lot of people's problem with it, this shirt that we're wearing, it was a bit. It, People always thought it was a bit of a Fleetwood Town knockoff, um, where Fleetwood maybe had a, a, a few shirts left over, and we we just taken that. It was. I know you maybe don't know what it looks like, but I'm assuming it, it looks like this. It looks a little bit like this, yeah. And I think I I like it. I, I like this. Obviously, I bought it, but I think the new one. The thing that drives me mad sometimes on a lot of the forums and a lot of the Facebook pages, people were crying out for. We just need a little something a little bit simpler you know a lot you know more red uh just a, a little bit simpler and then they get something more uh, you know a little bit simpler and oh it's a bit simple isn't it it's like you're I, not gonna please everyone you're not gonna and but i think it's the new red one love I like it, it. Yeah. great um the blue one i like the blue one yeah not sure i'd get it no um, I've, I've obviously you've ordered, ordered, you've ordered, I've ordered it. it um i think out of the the away and the third kit, yeah. I prefer the third kit. But the blue one again, it it gives me like the green away shirt last season gave me nineties Man United um, yeah. vibes because of the crisscross here. Yeah, this one gives me Man City vibes. Yeah, because of the blue. But, yeah, I that's fair but, enough. I think I think the green one last year, a lot of people fell in love with it uh, when it came out, and then quickly fell out of love with it. I, I think hated it. it it well, it wasn't my it wasn't my cup of tea. I didn't get it. Um, I think I do regret it a little bit in the sense of collectability long term. So I've got quite a few shirts from down the years. Looking back, I probably should have got it. Uh, but it, it's just I just thought it was horrible. Just, if if I'm yeah. perfectly, it's, I think it was, if it didn't have this, yeah. It would make that. Yeah. I think it might have been. I could have liked it. But... Fair point. Fair point. So hopefully next pod, uh, next podcast, next YouTube channel, we'll have the uh, we'll have the the, the new shirt. The on. red one on. The red one on. Fingers crossed. Anyway. So we'll have a quick chat. We'll run through the games that we've already been to and the, the games that have already uh, already happened. So. Again, we'll try and do them in order. So we got Nantwich. Obviously, yep. we won five two in Nantwich. So it was a bit of a double header for you. That was your first away, away. game, and it was also your first friendly yep. as well. So with it being your first friendly, what what's what's the question? I'm trying. What were your expectations for a, a friendly as such? To be honest, yeah. I um well you told me to rein it in to start off with <laughs> at a friendly because <laughs> um yeah um yeah I, I I what I didn't want to happen <laughs> I've been to friendlies before I know what a friendly is and I know a friendly is you know it's it's a run out and it, it's you know it, it might be trying tactics it might be trying to get you know your conditioning. You know, it might be purely about conditioning, just run, 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 get the stats nice and high. Um, and uh, we had a little chat before, and I just said, when they score, because they will score, Sean goes a little bit mad, don't you, when they score? And what I didn't want, in the middle of everybody, you just sort of on your knees going, yeah, like that. Because a friendly is just that. It's a friendly. It's, it's nice to see the lads running out. And it turned out though, yeah, that people did cheer. They did. It, I'm not saying don't cheer. I never said don't cheer. What I'm saying is, it's not the playoff final. <laughs> it, it's not like you know. It's not like you, you you're not gonna have tears streaming down your face watching uh, Wrexham play Nantwich in a, a, a capacity at the stadium which had one little stand with about fifty seats in it. You get my point. I get your point. Yes. So, um, but you enjoyed it. First away day, it was it was good. It was good. Yeah, yeah. it was good. Um, so then we had Spain. Um, so we played Leganes first. I, I'll be honest, the whole Spain thing, without bad mouthing the club, you know, because I, I, I don't, I'm not a big believer in that. 
um, because there's plenty of you out there that will do that. Um, but it was a bit of a shambles, I think, the Spain trip. It was announced ages ago and people had booked trips. And at one point, I think people were getting really worried that it wasn't going to happen and they'd already paid and booked to go. Yeah. And it, 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 as it turned out, it was okay. So they played Leganes first, the Spanish second tier team. Mm -hmm. um, played pretty well. I've seen the highlights. They, they played okay. Um, lost 2-0. I mean, it's to be expected with the, the, the team that they played. Yeah. And then, obviously, they, they played uh, Nottingham Forest under 20... 21s. 21s, 23s, yeah. something like that. And that was one all. Um, I think, ultimately, it was, it was a good run out. It was, you know, it was a training in a lot of heat, you know, and it was good to get that conditioning up for, for them. You know, again, there was a few fans out there. I'd salute you for that, um, for, for going out and watching them. Um, and I think it's, you know, with this start the part of the season, it's just all about conditioning, yeah. really. It's, it's getting that performance up. Um, last week, we had the, uh, they went down to uh, Carrington to, to play United. Um, lost 4 1. Hayden scored. Again, I, I, I think that's a massive achievement. It, I think that's a really good result. And um, the reports I've read, they played, I mean, it was one, one all at half time. They had some decent players on the pitch. And I think. You know, United are going to be taking that nice and slowly. You know, they're not. You know, they're not a full tilt. Uh, but I think it's a decent performance. Mm -hmm. um, from what I've heard, it was a. You know, it was a very good performance out there. And then, little touch on yesterday. Um, so we went to the game. Obviously, uh, the Macclesfield game. Yep. Great to be back. Wasn't oh my it? god! I kept saying to you, didn't I? I love it. So glad. I'm so excited. Can't wait. Can't wait to see the boys coming out again and doing their thing. The boys. It's like they're your children. They are my boys. They're my boys. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed being back there yesterday, to be honest. It was yeah. really good. And new addition. Get the players. Oh, my God, yeah. Scoreboard. Scoreboard. Bloody massive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, there was uh, one picture we saw on Facebook with somebody sitting at the back of the tech end um, who couldn't quite see the goal. Now, I'm not sure... How, how, what angle he was taking that photo at, and uh, yeah, I'm not sure. It does look big, um, but it's great to have a scoreboard. I, I'll be honest though, I kept on glancing in the far corner. Do you know what? I've seen so, so many posts on on Facebook yeah. on the groups saying that they looked over in the uh, cop end. Yeah, I, I did it a few times myself. I did. I definitely did it. People are moaning about that stupid bloody clock in the corner. And then when it goes, everyone's going, where's the bloody clock gone now? So obviously everyone in the tech end can't see the scoreboard. I mean, it's not ideal, but, you know, it's one of them, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's one of them. It's, it's, it, it looks good. And after so long, it's good to have a scoreboard back in, I've never it? been to a game that's had a scoreboard, so it's... Uh... No, exactly. Yeah. So the game itself, um, what did you think? Just, just general thoughts about the game. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Happy, good performance. Yeah, I think the boys played well. Interestingly, I'm keen to know, could you see a difference in the Nantwich game and the Macclesfield game in sort of like intensity or the way they played? Or to you, was it just two friendlies? What, what do you No, mean? I did. I, I, the difference is, I think, um, the A, the atmosphere in the race course. Yeah. Always amazing. Yeah. Even though there wasn't half as many people 4, as there. Four thousand, I think, there was yeah. yesterday. Um, I think they. I think because they're at their home ground. Mm. I think it's it's kind of they have not they have to prove something because it is just a friendly. But I think they have that. I don't know. Com com there's not even a word. Comfortability. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're more comfortable okay, playing yeah. Yeah, on yeah. their own turf. I think for me, I could definitely see a, a, a step up. Mm -hmm. So I think from the Nantwich game, it was very much a run around. Yeah. Um, um, I have to just a, I do have to mention though in the Nantwich game, the two Nantwich scored were absolute worldies. They were great goals. They're they're two goals. Um, but I saw a little bit more of how we were going to play mm -hmm. yesterday in the Macclesfield game. Um. Certainly, some standout players for you. Were, were there any players that you sort of felt stood out yesterday? Um, Ford, I thought he did well. Downside, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I think, I think Mullen was quite 
reserved yesterday. Yeah. Didn't didn't kind of see him kind of no. move as much as he usually does, but yeah. maybe that's because he's holding back because it was just a friendly. Yeah. Um Ollie Palmer, he was um I noticed I noticed a bit of a change yesterday. I did and I don't know if this is something that they, they've worked on sort of tactically, but our, our front two have always been quite, you know, they, they, they'll run the channels and they'll do their thing. I noticed yesterday a lot where Ollie was dropping deep to collect the ball and turn, and then the midfielders were running round him. I did, I noticed Ollie popping up on the wing a couple of times as well. So I don't know if that's something that they've purposely worked on a little bit more movement from the front two to yeah. sort of come into some different positions. Uh, Ford, you mentioned, I thought he was great. Um, if there was one little thing I don't think we really got to see, um, going forward, I thought he was great. I don't think he had to do much defending. And as a wing back, he's going to be required to do that. Um, so you can. But would you say that was because uh, Macclesfield is kind of not a not a great team? But do you know what I mean? They're not. They yeah. didn't have to do as much. No, I get that, but I think you've always got to before you 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 sort of you cannot with wing backs. Wing backs. If you go back twenty years, wing backs didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the game, it was a right back, and then there was a right midfielder. And then what they've done over the years is they've converted that right-hand side into a player that will attack mm -hmm. and will defend. Now, what you will get, you will either get a right-back, so a defender that has been converted into a right-wing-back. Yeah. So they'll be really good at defending. Maybe not as good going forward. Not all of them, but not as good going forward. Then you will also get wingers, who are attacking players, who are converted into right wing backs going forward? They're great because mm -hmm. it's what they've always yeah. done since kids. Defending, that's where they need to learn a little bit. So I think Ford is very comfortable going forward. It's just one of them things. Time will tell. I, he didn't have to do much defending yesterday, and I think you know for him as well. He only came in this week. He got thrown straight in. Yeah. You know, all I think we forget sometimes is the players are people who live somewhere else uh, with wife with kids the kids go to school where you know yeah where, what you know are you moving are you leaving your family where they are are you you know are you all moving down are you going to commute you know obviously we read the story about ben toza this week he yeah. was his wife and kids were still living in cheltenham all last season and he was commuting back and to and back and to so to come in and play like he did i thought it was he was excellent yep. yesterday yep. um it's great to have Hayden back. We missed him so much at the end of last yeah. season. I, shiny I, I, legs. I, shiny legs, yes. Um, when he warms up, that's not just some random nickname <laughs> we've come up with. When he warms up, I think he uses baby oil on his legs because he has very shiny legs. But yeah, yeah, watch out for that. Um, <laughs> for me, I think James Jones is always great. Luke Young, Love him. great, he yep. always does a job. I think the player that stood out for me yesterday was Tom O'Connor, um, in a sense of everything he did looked effortless. It was just, he was always in the right place. He floated around the pitch, and I definitely think it's what we've been missing in mm -hmm. the middle. And I think he is going to be a phenomenal player. He's young, and I think up until yesterday, I said I couldn't see how Luke Young and Tom O'Connor were going to fit into the team together. But they did. After yesterday, I can see. Yeah. And it, I thought Tom, Tom O'Connor yesterday was outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. I think he, he, was, he was really good. I'm looking forward to seeing how he... Um, I think the first half an hour was amazing from everyone. I think it's sort of... Once, I think once the players realised the gulf in class, I think the foot came off the gas a little bit. Yeah. And we just sort of took it a little bit easier because Still you don't, kicked ass though, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Um, but you don't, you know, you're not going to run yourself in the ground. No, and, you know, and not I so think, friendly. But yeah, Tom O'Connor stand out for me yesterday. I thought he was, uh, I thought he was absolutely uh, brilliant. Happy with the man of the match? Oh, absolutely. You Luke know my, Young. you know my yeah. thoughts on Luke Young. I love him. I think yeah. he's brilliant. Um, I was a bit, a little bit weird. I thought Elliot Lee wasn't in the squad. I was looking forward to seeing him. He wasn't even on the bench, was he? He wasn't even on the bench. When we went to Nantwich, he was warming up on his own, wasn't he? Do you remember? Yes, I do. And he looked 
knackered. So, and you looked at me and you went, that doesn't bode well. I think his fitness is a little bit behind everybody else's. So I think, um, obviously, we've got a game against Carnarvon on Tuesday. Um, I've heard Phil Parkinson saying that Elliot Lee will feature in that game. So, um, and then it'll be, I'm just really looking forward to next Saturday to see what team is put out because I, Can't wait. I think there's a lot of competition there. Apart from the front two. Um, I, you know, I think they're pretty much set. Yeah. But I do think there's a lot of competition all the way around that squad now, which is good. Um, I think one one player, I think definitely needs a shout shout out. Um, I, he wasn't in the squad yesterday, but he played in Nantwich, and I thought he was excellent. I think that's Kai Evans, and I think yep. moving forward, he's going to be a great player for us. I do, really do. I think he's going to be a great player, um, and. Obviously, his uncle used to play for Exxon as well. I don't know if you knew that. No. Uh, his dad used to play in uh, the Cymru Premier Division. He played for a few clubs. Um, his uncle, Steve, used to play for Wrexham. He looked really good, really confident on the ball. Young lad. Shouldn't do this, but if you get a chance, um, he was interviewed after the Nantwich game. Um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's funny seeing young players who haven't been media trained and haven't done it very often. Uh, because, <laughs> I'm not taking the mic. If you watch this, I'm not taking the mic, but it just made me chuckle. He was getting interviewed. Uh, the, the, the the guy who was interviewing put the mic out and Kai went to grab the mic off him and he went, oh, no, and panicked and then just started talking again. It's it's a funny moment. If you haven't seen it, have a little look. Uh, but that great, comes with experience, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, great player, and I think he will, uh, he'll do really yeah, he well for us. So we've got a couple of games this week. We, so we've got Carnarvon Town. That's yeah. on Tuesday night. That's the last of the pre-season stuff. And then we're jumping straight in to Eastleigh. The Spitfires. Oh, the Spitfires. <laughs> yes. So are you excited? Excited. Very yeah. excited. Just one word, excited. Just, I, I can't wait. I just, yeah. I loved being back there yesterday and I just can't wait to be back there again tomorrow. Remind me, how did we Sorry. do against them last season? Stato. Uh, Stato. Yeah. Well, home, we beat them 3 2. That was that horrible game, wasn't it? So it was 2 all. Reese Johnson penalty, won a penalty in the last minute. Yep. Mullin smashed it in at about 60 yards. 98th miles minute, yeah. 98th minute. Hats off to anyone who can hit a penalty that hard in the 98th minute to win a game. Um, but yeah, no, that was, yeah, we, I think we should have won that a lot more comfortably. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Danny Whitehall scored... The two goals at home. Both goals, and he was their top scorer last 26th season. 26th minute and the 65th minute. Oh, wow, that is stats. That is stats. We've even got minutes. Um, yeah, so I, I, he's still there as well, isn't he? Yep. So he might be one to keep an eye out uh, for next Saturday. Um, how did we do get away against them? 2-0. Uh, Two, so we beat them 2-0 we away. Jake and, Hyde scored both goals. Yeah, and uh, they, they had a poor poor run as well, didn't they? They were quite low down in the table, I think. They finished the season 19th. 19th, mm. okay. But so the they, season before that, they finished 9th, so that is quite a drop. It's quite a drop as well, if you bear in mind that teams 21st to 24th, or no, 20th to 23rd, I think, were relegated. Yeah, well, yeah, whatever it is, but it, they're right there. They're on the cusp mm -hmm. uh, of, of being relegated. So, I've learned through many years not to take anything for granted. I do feel that clubs come to us now, and it's like a cup final for them. It's like that we are the team they want to beat. Yeah. Just to go, we will shut Ryan Reynolds up. Uh, we will shut Rob, Rob McElhenney up. And I think players yeah. up their game when they come to us. We've seen very poor teams play, play very well against Dover. us. I mean... Do well, yeah, they did play well. I think a lot of people were quite critical of how Wrexham played. Yes, we were poor, but Dover did play very well. They did. Um, so, yeah, I think we need to be on our A game. Um, uh, fingers crossed for that one. You got prediction? What? For next week? Yeah, for Saturday. For Saturday, I think I'm going to go with 3-2. Again? 3-2 again. Ugh. Obviously not Mullen scoring in the 98th minute. That would uh, be... I'm going to go 3-0. I'm going to go 3-0. So we'll do a little predictions every week. We'll see who gets the most right. Do we win a prize? Uh, no. Just the prize. Pro possible. We'll come up with a prize. Come up with a prize. Come up with a prize. Okay, so <laughs> looking ahead at the season... Um, 
obviously I'm not going to ask you where do you think we're going to finish or you're not going to ask me where do I think we're going to finish because we're obviously going to both say the same thing. I've had a look at a few sort of predictors. Mm -hmm. So 442, for example, 442 magazine have done a National League prediction um, and they had Wrexham first uh, going up. I Obviously, what I did notice, though, there was another one um, that put South End first and us, us second. I mean, absolute <laughs> I mean, there is no <laughs> chance that South End are winning this league. I will be honest, when they played us, mm -hmm. they looked all right. They did look okay. I, they could pass the ball around, you know, decent team. They're not winning this league. That's the, you can take that to the bank. They're not winning this league. So how somebody had them winning this league, I've got no idea. Um, apart from where we're going to finish, what are your sort of expectations for the season? Um, just to win every single game. Well, I was weirdly. That's see, that's in sync. That is because I was going to ask you: Have you ever heard of the uh, Arsenal Invincibles? No. No. So the Invincibles, they went the whole season without being defeated. Um, they, they drew a few games. Obviously, they didn't just win everything, but they were, you know, they were. They, and I was going to ask whether you thought Wrexham were going to go all, all season without losing a game. Well, the near the end of the season, last season, this season, last season, yeah. yeah um, we 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 went undefeated. Like we did. I, I, can't, I can't remember how many games it was now, but we did go quite a long time without being we did. defeated. I think I think it's I think it's possible. I'd love to see it happen. I wouldn't. You know, there's always the times when they're tired and there's a slip up. But I'd love to see it happen. So this section of the show uh, in future weeks is going to be for you. So either the viewers or the listeners, if you're on the podcast. We want you to get in touch, ask questions, um, suggest anything that you want uh, that you want us to talk about. Um, anything, absolutely anything at all. We want you to get in touch. So we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on TikTok. Um, all you've got to do is search me, the wife, and Wrexham AFC. If you want to email us, if you prefer doing that, it's me, the wife and rexamafc at gmail.com. So if you want to get in touch, this section is going to be for you. It's our first episode. No one's got in touch yet because we haven't asked you to. But now we have. So please get in touch and then we will open this section up to you in the, in the coming weeks. So with you being a new fan, I thought it would be quite fun to do a for little... For you. For me... <laughs> to do a little quiz okay. every week just to see how much you've picked up through the season. Okay. I thought it'd be quite interesting to see. Mm -hmm. Now, this week, it's going to be songs. Okay. okay. So, wreck some songs. Now, what I want you to do, there's five points available every week. I'm going to sing. I'm going to rewind. I'm going to attempt to sing a part of a wreck some song. Right? Okay. And what I need you to do is tell me what the next line is. Right, okay. As simple as that, okay? Okay. There's five points on offer. Okay. Now, the first one is for two points. Okay. And there's a special reason for this is you need to do two things. You need to do an action, a correct action, and also give me the next line. Okay? Okay. Number one. So I'll do it, and you just follow on. Okay? <coughs> Ready? Yeah, thanks. Fearless in devotion. Oh. <laughs> one point for the clap. Next line. Again, again. <laughs> promote it. Oh, do you know what? It's so close. It's rising to promotion. Now, a better man would give you a point for that, but I'm not going to. <laughs> okay, next one. <clears throat> Ooh, Parky, do you know what that's worth? I've never heard that song before. Oh. Ollie Palmer is the best on earth. Never no. heard it. Okay. That's a big fat zero for that one. I think that's, I think that's not fair. Well, it's not my problem. I've never okay, heard it. Okay, let's move on. We are Wrexham FC. 
We're never gonna die. We are. Oh my god. This is Paul. I know the Paul Mullen song. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike our Chester neighbours who kiss their club goodbye. That's the next line of that one. Okay, it's the Alley, Alley, Alley. Alley, 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 Alley. Oh, I know that bit. Well, I didn't want to do that bit because it's too easy. <laughs> I would have got that though. Last one. I can see what's coming. We've got <laughs> Mullen. <laughs> Super Paul Mullen. Uh, I was hoping that I would get the bit that you just sang. Let's see if one way. I'm a new fan, what can I say? You've got to learn them songs because that was absolute. <laughs> okay, so one more important signing. I think that we haven't already discussed. It's a very important one. And it is. Morag the Dragon. Morag the Dragon. So Morag the Dragon, if you haven't already heard, uh, used to sit on the Tesco roundabout. Yep. Um, other supermarkets are available. Um, it was bought at auction this week for £8,000. Now, I understand that it's going to be incorporated into the new cop. That's what they've said. So when yeah. that's built, so I'm not quite sure where that's going to be. On the top, on the side, somewhere inside, we're not quite sure. But I think it's going to look brilliant. Love it. Yeah, can't wait I for that. What idea that was to buy that? I'm going to guess that was Rob's. Dragon. I reckon Rob's been on the hunt for a dragon for a while. <laughs> well, now he's got his dragon. Now he's got his now dragon. Now he's got his dragon. So that wraps up episode one. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, we will see you back a week from now. The episodes will get released every Monday. Monday. Uh, join us on Facebook, join us on Twitter, join us on all the social media, and then you'll get to hear about all future episodes when they're coming out. We'll post a link to them on there as well. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>